Let's just say for, you know, when you when you said thanks for resetting the matrix, you were probably joking, but the reality is we it there was such a hard reset that took place when we were in Egypt in May of 2018. It was so set in stone as we were supposed to be there at that time doing that exact thing that on the way out of the pyramid if you if you watch the video the one, the last video that we took inside of the great pyramid at giza us exiting the king's chamber the camera pans around and you see covid written in stone on this on the wall in graffiti it was weird. I can yeah. pull up that video here in just a second. But first of all, um, I want to say thank you for having us, Rex. <laughs> yes. No doubt about it. Um, and uh, yeah, last time, the last thing you said to us was say, thank you for resetting the matrix. Mm -hmm. And I want to assure the audience out there that when we, we went and did our thing in Egypt, May 2018, we did not have this in mind. We did not have COVID lockdowns in mind. We did not have any of that. But the fact that the, the, the words... The Matrix Reset, the Great Reset, are on Time Magazine. You know, last time we were on, I, w I was I was kicking around the idea that what we did May in 2018, and it wasn't just Sheree and I. It was a, a lot of people, a lot yeah. of people's combined energy, everybody at the BTV tribe, et cetera, et cetera. We went on this mission to Egypt, and we didn't know what we were going to do. We knew that we needed to do a ceremony within the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid mm -hmm. um, a, and a couple of other temples as well, the Temple of Isis, um, Hatshepsut's Temple. We didn't know it was going to be at that moment. We thought we were just going kind of a reconnaissance kind of mission, and that's it. Once we got there, we started touching the stones, and we started pulling information out of these stones, and then all the doors just opened for us. I mean, we got overnight access to the Great Pyramid. They literally locked us in there, just me and by ourselves they even opened up the king's uh, the queen's chamber they opened up the subterranean chamber which yep. has been uh closed off to the public for for decades and we've got um H hd video of all of that we're running around you know crazy etc cetera, etc cetera. it was insane so um we did our ritual in the sarcophagus of the king's chamber and we came back and um actually in a video before we went into the the king's chamber i said you know if this matrix reset thing is going to work it's going to take about three to five years to manifest itself and when we got up there into the ceremony when we when we actually did our thing moved the energies around sheree came back and she says all right it's going to be four minutes and 37 second countdown time and it's roughly about one year um here as uh for one minute out there in the real world and i'll explain the matrix here in just a few moments too but um it's funny how we're literally at the halfway point right now of our countdown clock which is ending around december 2022 and we're seeing this kind of timeline splitting taking place right now there's a positive and negative pull people are trying to manifest a positive timeline a negative timeline is trying to hijack that that positive timeline and so on and so forth so um it's interesting and um when i say um um you know um uh, again, this is not what we expected, but in hindsight, it, it makes perfect sense for this to happen. So I know a lot of people probably thought that we were crazy when we were last time on the show. Um, on our channel, we took the interview and we actually spliced all the footage that we talked about. Right. So uh, it's, it's different when you're actually seeing it. Mm -hmm. But now that we're living through it and we're looking back and going, oh my God, something amazing happened yeah. May of 2018 that, that started some kind of cycle, some kind of reset mm -hmm. uh, process of the main matrix so um feel free to jump in any time but i mean i can go on and on and on about what the matrix actually is so what i've come to realize through the many 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 lifetimes i've been here the many experiences that i've had here and the the gnosis that we've unlocked and um also backing it up with scientific evidence too i mean it's mm -hmm. like everywhere you you turn it seems to you know the the consensus consensus seem, consensus seems to be that we're living in a computer simulation. So when you think about it from that regard, all of a sudden everything starts to make sense. Astrology. Why does astrology work? My wife is a very 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 talented astrologer. Um, so much so that if she does a reading for me and she does it on a daily basis, she does what's called transit charts. If I don't pay attention. 
attention to those readings, what happens is I'll go out and I'll have a bad day. And then um, I'll read what she sent me in Skype in the morning. And everything that happened during the day, I could have avoided had I read my <laughs> transits before I left the house. And so, you know, I, 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 I read the transits and I've seen how many times the transits have been right and wrong based on when I have not read them and read them in hindsight to know that it's really, really, really accurate. And I know a lot of your listeners out there, they're really into astrology and mm -hmm. things like that. Well, when you think about astrology from a computer programming and computer simulation perspective, then realistically what we're looking at is we're looking at like a circuit board or different kinds of frequencies and changes that are happening within the matrix so we can um, predict what's going to happen, especially on a quote unquote global level, um, because you're having different types of energies and movements and things like that. So you know um, the the frequency and the energy of, um, uh, of what's going to happen on that particular day in your particular life or even on a global level um, mm -hmm. throughout the course of several months. So then... Um you um you also take uh, energy work. You know, a lot of people talk about energy healing. Shaman mm -hmm. have been talking about this since the beginning of time. Energy healing um, is essentially just code work. I mean, you're moving around code. And when I realized going into these these uh, these experiences that I was looking at energy, everybody always calls it energy. But then I realized, wait a minute, we're looking at code here. So then I started looking at it scientifically, and I realized that like DNA, for example, it's all based on zeros and ones. Um, they can they can actually create what's called Hachimochi DNA, which is an H-strand DNA. So they can take the DNA, they can manipulate it, they can change it, they can do all kinds of stuff with it because it's nothing but code. They even call it the DNA code. And as I was doing this research for this documentary that we're putting together, Resetting the Matrix, which we talked about last time we were on the show but never got it together because it's just the, the gnosis is so ever-evolving, I came across an article that said the digital, it was titled the digital nature of DNA. Now it gets even deeper than that though. So you've got, you know, different DNA, you've got RNA, the way RNA um, uh, talks to the DNA, you've got, um, and it's exactly like a computer system, it's exactly like a computer. Um, the body's like a computer, the brain is like a, com a computer processor. David Icke was talking about the body computer way back in 2010. It starts to bridge all of these gaps. Now here's the kicker. Professor Gates, this is Professor Gates, um, Sylvester Gates, one of my favorite, favorite um, uh, physicists, he studies st string theory. And within string theory, he found a self-correcting computer code. He found an actual computer code. Now, in 2020, most people know what computer code is. It's not just like looking at the at the clouds and then seeing a bunny because the mind David, I automatically makes whatever, you know, it makes familiar uh, objects. We're looking at something complex here that he found in in the fabric of space time, essentially in string theory itself, a self-correcting computer code, not just any computer code, but it's an identifiable computer code written by a guy named Claude Shannon in the 1940s, who's the father of robotics. So now we have physicists coming out and saying that uh, they're finding computer code. I wrote uh, Professor Gates, asked him to come onto the show, and he was reluctant to because he said, you know, I don't want to go along the computer theory, the computer simulation theory, et cetera, et cetera, because that opens up a whole new dogma and a whole new religion, et cetera, et cetera. He was still very scientifically based minded around it. I, 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 I We probably should have had him on the show, and I, I think we will have him on the show. Uh, to talk about it from his perspective, but he's recognized as code. Now, Elon Musk, of course, I'm sure you've heard Elon Musk talk about technology. And most people have played virtual reality, especially in 2020. I've got a virtual reality um, uh, right in the other room. When you put it on, it's such an immersive experience. Um, there's this game called, I don't remember, something Walk the Plank. I don't know if you've ever played this, but you're like on top of a building. It's like a 50, 60 story building, 100 story building. You're walking on this plank and you feel like like you're starting to fall off of it, even though you know you're in a room, you and 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 the the graphics are all cartoonish as well. But it's it, the senses can be tricked so much so to where you really feel like you're falling. You're really feel you're really feeling like you're about to fall. Well, if we assume any level of progression in our technology, whether it's fifty years or fifty thousand years, what's going to happen is we're going to create a reality that's indistinguishable from this one. It's just I mean, it just looking at the progression of technology, it's going to happen sooner than later there's another element to this too the god helmet i don't know if you're familiar with the god helmet but um the god helmet is a device 
um, by Dr. First of all, Corian, I think is his name. And first they called it the Corian octopus, which I, I thought was really interesting. But the God helmet, it's basically a helmet that you put on and it sends different electromagnetic frequencies to the brain. So by changing those electromagnetic frequencies, what happens is people have encounters with aliens. They have encounters with angels. They, they feel people touching them. They feel people behind them, all of this. And this is all monitored in a science in, in a, a, a scientific laboratory and they're watching all these What's people it called again? it's called the god helmet is that like a radionics yes. type helmet yes exactly it activates oh, uses okay. electromagnetics to activate certain areas areas of the brain and kind of like it's it's like pushing buttons on a computer it really is it's it's literally just stimulating parts of the brain associated with these mystical experiences and people are having mystical experiences on demand with it so so you combine all these technologies virtual reality god helmet manipulating brain waves pretty soon we're going to create a reality that's indistinguishable from this one well if the universe is as old as it is what are the, what is the probability that we haven't already done so and already put ourselves in a computer simulation in a computer a, a computer uh, a machine essentially and then all of a sudden it explains everything it explains paranormal activity it explains psychic ability it explains literally everything because we're watching programs playing out and we're we're picking up on different energies we're picking up on different codes we're picking up on it all so I've come to not only an understanding that we're in a computer simulation, but a gnosis, like a deep inner gnosis that we're in a computer system. But the computer system was infected with a virus and it has been infected with a virus. And this virus has started to come up to the surface and the virus hid in the background. It was this whole pizza related stuff. I won't say that keyword, but people know what I'm talking about. It This virus feeds on suffering. It feeds on fear. It, fe it feeds on all these negative emotions, like really, really, really dark suffering well what happened is after we went to egypt may of 2018 we we did this whole you know matrix reset process thing what happened as a manifestation as a result of that because as above so below energy changes in the background reflect physically in the in in this space right here well now all of a sudden we have this covid virus well covid you know i think covid is real because I think Sheree and I both got it in, in March. It was nothing more than a light flu. But the, the main thing that COVID does is it feeds on fear. It's got everybody walking around with a mask. It's got everybody afraid of one another. It's got people standing six feet away from each other. Because I think what's happening is the virus is losing its power. So now it's looking for different power supplies. The virus was buried deep and it's come up to the surface now during this whole matrix reset process. So it's really a mind virus as it's always been. It's just now mm -hmm. labeled a pandemic and a physical pandemic. But with a 99.96% survival rate, why are we walking around with masks? Why are we shutting down businesses? Right. Why are we doing all of this? The flu kills more people than that. Yes. And so. I'm sorry for going on for so long, Rex. Let me <laughs> hand it back over to you. Dude, I'm glad you did because check it out. Do you know what just happened? When you started talking about the Matrix reset and you, you made it up to, or I made it before my computer just shut off to the part of uh, you, like you're on like the third pyramid or the third megalith in Egypt that you talked about. And then all of a sudden my computer just went oh. and, and I'm like, wait a second. And then I'm pushing the button, pushing the button, pushing the button. And it's like, the battery was dead, but the battery was just at 91%, and then it went to 84%, and then it just was gone. And then, luckily, check this out, in my mobile command center, I've got like a 100-pound a freaking generator right here. So I <laughs> plug that sucker in. So, so, you know, I'm like, I'm running, I'm grabbing, I'm plugging it in, and, and then so I plug it in, and then I push the button, and then the thing turns back on, and it's fine again, and then it resets. And I'm like, what's going on here? And so anyway, now my battery's showing at 77%, and it's just... Dude, there's you brought a, thought back we're, with you. We're bringing the <laughs> we're bringing the frequencies up and down and up and down. It's it's funny because when we were in Egypt, um, we went to the temple of Hatshepsut, uh -huh. and um, it was more like a charging station. It 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 was weird. It recharged us when we did our ceremony yeah. there. But we took this little Bose unit with us, and um, when you turn it on, it says battery one hundred percent. And we were playing it for about five hours. After about mm -hmm. five hours, you turn it off, and right before it turns off, it should say battery forty percent or you know something like that 
it lasts six, seven hours tops. Yeah. After the whole ceremony, we turned it off and it said battery 100%. Uh-huh. And we're like, wait a minute, what's going on it here? It hasn't been plugged in. And, and we've literally been playing that for like five hours straight. Uh-huh. We turn it back on, battery 100%. We go to the Great Pyramid. All of a sudden, all our devices start draining. Uh-huh. And then the 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 person who led us into the Great Pyramid said, "Yeah, the Great Pyramid has a tendency to do that. It like sucks like you know devices energy from it." So, well, it- another interesting thing about the the Temple of Hatshepsut that I think you forgot about, Chris, is that I I kept seeing these uh, crosses in certain places, and, not, and especially in this area that's known for sacrifices. It's where they would do sacrifices. And, animal sacrifices. Yeah, animal sacrifices. sacrifices. Not human, but animal. And I saw, you know, I kept seeing these crosses and then these lines. And I said, wait a second. And and I asked the guy, the, ar- the not archaeologist, but the um, Egyptologist who was with us, uh, giving us permission to do this ceremony here. I asked him what it was. And he said, oh, it's a cross. It's a cross. He kept saying it's a cross. And I'm like, that doesn't feel right to me. And, and then I re- realized... Wait a second. On one side, you've got the plus sign, and the other side, you've got a minus. When you sign. walk in, there's a cross uh-huh. on one side, and then there's a uh, just a, a line on the other side. Right, right when you walk into the the sacrifice room, yeah, it's a positive and it, negative. It's literally telling we you this like, is a battery. It's a battery. It's yeah. a positive. It's a negative. We were like, whoa. I mean, just it, yeah, it was yeah. it blew us. But away. everything is frequency. Everything is frequency. Yes. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you believe in computer simulation or not. If you're just old school shaman, if you're new age, et cetera, et cetera, it's all about frequency. Well, what is frequency? Frequency is zeros and ones. What's binary code? Binary code means that when one, when a zero means power off, one means power on. Mm -hmm. The more zeros and ones in the the way that they're lined up is creates a frequency. A frequency is on, off, on, off, on, off. Right. The more on, the higher the frequency gets. The more off, the the lower the frequency gets. So realistically, again, it all goes back to computer simulation. It all goes back right to binary code. Everything is frequency. Everything is based on zeros and ones. Check this out. Uh, it's interesting because you brought up the, the synchronicity that you had out there uh, in the pyramids. And then... What, could you tell me the name one more time? I'm going to write this down. I'm trying to keep up with y'all. The, there was a speci- which location was it that your phone did not drain at all? This is the Temple of Hatshepsut. Um, Hatshepsut. Um, H a t c h. No, Shuri. Shuri's the spell. The speller. H a t s h e p s u t. Okay, and you were there for. Five hours. We were there for five hours doing our ceremony. Mm-hmm. We were there all day, but we were there for five playing hours music playing the whole music time. the entire time through this Bose little. It's like this little Bose device. The Temple of Achepsun is pretty interesting because it was never really used. It was like created and then buried. And when they when they excavated in the 1950s, they found like everything was pristine in it. It was it was an anomaly. Like where did this place come from? Hatshepsut was an interesting um, character because she was the only female pharaoh, right. and she actually wore the the female beard. She wore the, the pharaonic beard, beard. Yeah, yeah, which is only for men. She was allowed into um, the inner sanctum of the priests. Of the she temple, made yeah. peace with everybody all around. I mean, she was a modern day orange leader i'll just leave it at that (laughs) you know a peacemaker that was going around and making all these peace deals literally everywhere and she was she was free trade with other countries everybody loved her and she started out as a um what's that term called um, it, where it's like the place. Oh, holder, a regent. A regent. She yeah, started she out just as had a regent. regent. Yeah, first. she started yeah. out as a regent because um, the king had died. His son was like six, seven years old, yeah, something he was only like a, that. A so she kid. was, yeah. So she was the regent until he became of age. Well, when he became of age, she took over because she had made such peace deals with everybody. She had made such deals with the priests, everything like that, that they didn't want her to leave, and right. they knew that he was going to 
come in and basically ruin all of that. He was going to screw everything so out because of an So she maintained yeah. power for, for, for quite some time and actually yeah. put on the pharaonic beard at that point, and you see her with the pharaonic beard. What's interesting, too, though, is that all the pharaohs, they have their right foot forward, and all, you know, every temple that we went to, they had their right foot forward. Uh -huh. Hatshepsut, on the, other, on the other hand, had her left foot forward. Right. So I don't know if that symbolizes anything, but even her foot was, was, was the different. The feminine aspect. Oh, yeah. that's it. Yeah, because the left Hello. brain is creativity and feminine, and I, I'm sorry, the yeah, yeah, the right brain is creativity and the feminine, while the left brain. I might have that the other way. I think Hatshepsut had a right foot. Yeah, and the she other had ones a have right left foot, foot, and yeah. the other ones had their left foot. Yeah, it was the uh -huh. left. Yeah, very cool. You just very solved cool. the mystery so in my head that I've been keeping saying, around for years. Rex. And you know the thing about the thing about Hatshepsut yes. and what what was her downfall was that number one she was too close to her um to her advisor and architect um uh, Senenmut Senenmut was an architect was a he was basically the he was he was the first mason he was the I first think. freemason really yeah. because he was an architect that designed all the temples that he designed for her were were built around masonic principles of um complete and total harmony with the universe in building these based on st where the stars are ver versus where you're actually building everything it was the first one since the great pyramid that was really well done it was the i i think it's really the only temple um in between the time that the pyramids were built and the time that this was built this was the only one that really shone as far as the masonic work involved um her relationship with him was a little bit too close and it was commonly it was just common knowledge but nobody ever talked about it that her daughter who she was grooming to be the next pharaoh i mean she was it was she was that blatant about this um her daughter it was commonly thought that her father was was Senemut, that this masonic architect was the father of her daughter um because she wasn't married so you know it, it everybody just assumed you know this is their daughter together and they even have and she even appointed him as her daughter's tutor uh as a child and that but that was part of her downfall though was later on um people have wondered if she was murdered because she even uh had in the temple in the temple of Hatshepsut it was supposed to be a burial uh t a burial temple for her and she it was just never used which is you know number one number two there's stales where she's drinking milk directly from the teat of the of hathor the cow and that indicates i'm even afraid of being poisoned because she was she became really paranoid in her last years and i think rightfully so you know i think whenever you are a woman in a patriarchal kind of society it doesn't matter how many good peace deals you make there's always going to be underhandedness and there's always going to be men that try to basically gang up on you and use whatever they can use against you to take you down and to take you out and she realized this and uh she sent she ended up sending sen and mood away um and she lived basically by herself and she was just paranoid uh, for the rest of her life and that is reflected in some of these stales of where she's saying you know people have tried to poison me you know everybody's trying to take me down the gods are the only people i have on my side and um yeah so i think i think she was she was murdered and then what happened was her her nephew was weak-minded and he just basically followed whatever his advisors told him to do which was terrible because it ended up bringing Egypt down several notches economically and politically and they just started weakening after that point and they were ripe to be taken over by the Hyksos pharaohs which her grandfather had fought really well and kept them at bay she had kept them at bay but then when the Hyksos pharaohs took over took over that was really the death knoll for Egypt because they weren't uh, they weren't able to be strong enough to defend themselves when Alexander the Great finally came along. When Alexander the Great finally came along, they were ripe for the picking. They were ready to be taken. Well, can taken I jump over. in for a second? Because yeah, what please. they did is 
once once this happened, they tried to erase her from history. Yeah, they went out and they tore down all of her stuff. I think that's maybe one of the reasons why this place was buried. Oh yeah, um, they were carving yeah. her her face out of everywhere. You know, they were really trying to to get rid of her. As they are with the orange um, leaders of Race people uh, other from times, history. cancel yes. culture, cancel culture. She got cancel. She cultured. got cancel cultured. Oh yeah, Big there time. you go. Big time. Even the Temple of Hatshepsut, a lot of her stalays that pe- that feature her. She got her attacked. Were... By... She got hit by. Yep. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So you know, it, Egypt, Egypt, it, it's such an interesting place, um, and with such 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 interesting history. But um, I think r- realistically, what we're looking at is like we're looking at like a motherboard, and yeah, we're looking exactly. at different points within the matrix where these pyramids are. They're mm-hmm. on ley lines. You can access different things through these pyramids. Not all of them, because like you know, there's some of them that that we built. Not me and Cherie, but I mean, we as in like us, the the. Um, I mean, we, the or- organic consciousness is yeah, what I call it. Matrix um, programmers. So here's here's the way that I define it. I guess real quick for your audience. I th- I, I've come to realize that there's two different types of consciousness in this world. There's organic consciousness. And just like every other video game, there's also non-player character consciousness. And this also reflects through ancient books. All you have to do is just see... They didn't have the language that we have now. We have a different language so we can communicate these ideas in a different way. They used to call it the dream world. Now we call it computer simulation. They used to call it the children of men and the children of light, like Emerald Tablets of Toth. Um, now we call it NPC and organic consciousness. Um, Helena Blavatsky called them those who had the divine spark and those who didn't have the divine spark. The Gnostics called it the psychics and the hillocks. There's always been a distinction between the two different types of consciousness that exist here in the Matrix. Now we just have computer computer terms to use. And I would say the Matrix is even more complex. We're just using the best, the best language that we have right now to communicated but we're in an interesting time where we can say instead of god artificial intelligence instead of um 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 uh, the Hillux, for example, uh, we say um, uh, non-player characters so it, it just like brings a little more understanding to the table here but when i say we i mean we is in the organic consciousness and what i think that we are most of us that are here that are tapped into this kind of information that are opening up our consciousness expanding our consciousness we come from outside of the matrix where i would say is atlantis base reality would be atlantis i think or at least if we didn't create a simulation within the simulation within the simulation the last place we came from which is atlantis so atlantis really is a lost state of consciousness rather than a lost continent in my humble opinion and that's what i would call the quote-unquote real world or at least one step beyond this matrix where we're trying to get back to but uh non-player characters they have to run a script so they run all these different scripts even 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 religious stuff you know you have the holy scriptures everything is a script everything is a script that you have to run in your mind an npc doesn't have the ability to question the nature of reality in this dynamic so obviously if you approach an npc and say hey we're living in computer simulation they're going to say you're crazy you're crazy you're crazy and it's their truth because they don't come from outside (laughs) they come from here they were legitimately created here so we have two very distinct truths now so even truth has a duality to it everything has a duality up and down left and right man and woman night and day etc 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 i hope i'm not going too deep dude this is leak project okay serious okay (laughs) no not at all no, this is, it's very interesting to think about the, the duality of things. Now let's get into, let's, let's go back to the matrix reset. Okay. And it's interesting. My friend Julian, he makes these great tinfoil hats that actually block 5g and they block different EMF radiations. And we're going to send you out some hats also. Um, and it, you just go, but anyway, he's in 2018, he took a photograph of a Corona beer right next to the tinfoil hat. And he said, did I foresee a conspiracy here? Because you see a tinfoil hat, you think a conspiracy, right? So you got the Corona beer and the tinfoil hat right next to each other from 2018. And uh, I'll, I'll send that later. He's got it up on his Facebook page. So I just thought, wow, we're, we're all tapping into the matrix here. We- 
prophesy without even understanding it. Yeah. I mean, I'll go back to some of my, of my, of my older music and I'm listening to the lyrics and going, I can't believe I wrote how that. How did I know this? And how did I know this? You know, people are finding all this stuff. I think, I think the reason is, is because we have all of this knowledge inside of us. The organic consciousness does. We already have this knowledge. Mm -hmm. The way that I understand consciousness is like this. You have the ego, which is who we are right now. There's nothing wrong with ego. Toxic ego is completely different. The new age would say you have to be egoless, egoless, egoless. But if you're egoless, then what are you? You're nothing. You're a doormat. You let people walk all over you. You're not sure of yourself. Where did this idea of I know one thing for sure and I know nothing and that's that I know nothing comes from? At some point, we have to know something, in my humble opinion. That's where I've come after I've completed that loop of going, okay, I know nothing. Now it's like, oh, well, I finally figured something out. So we're, we're, we come to that point. But you have our egos, which we have to, you know, like Chris Gio would be my ego right now. Um, and we, and that's what we have to, to use to operate within the matrix. Below that is what I call raw consciousness. Who were we before? Who was I before I was Chris Gio? I was somebody in a past life. Who was I before that past life? Who was I before that past life? Before, 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 going all the way back to the point of entry into this matrix. Who am I on that level? That's where the gnosis, in my humble opinion, resides. And so when, when people are doing stuff like that, like putting these the tinfoil hat and the corona together, that's all coming out from, in my opinion, the raw consciousness. And with Hollywood, or at least Netflix, I don't want to say Hollywood, Netflix at the very least, um, it's hard to tell whether they take these very real ideas and then they embed them within these films in order to make it look silly, to go, oh, well, you just heard that in that film. Or if it's the fact that these directors or, or writers are tapping into their creative element and pulling this information out, thinking that they're writing a fictional story, but in actual fact, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're pulling out information that we all have within us, then you get these like cult classics like Star Wars, all these different things where it's like, what's going on here in Star Wars? You have this kid. He's a farmer. He gets this consciousness. Um, 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 he goes through this consciousness awakening. He gets a light sword. Um, he becomes a Jedi. And then he figures out that the whole universe is run by this artificial intelligence, which is the Death Star and Darth Vader. I mean, you know, that's exactly what we're talking about here. And it's funny because we brought all this out from inside of us. I mean, even this whole idea, I don't want to, I don't want to go too far off topic, but I, I I had this experience in August of, I want to say 2017. Um, it was during that eclipse. I don't know if you remember that eclipse that, uh, that encompassed the entire- I was there. You were there. Degree parallel. I'm, I was watching it, oh, man. Okay. I was in it. You were in the eclipse. You remember that, okay? Yeah. I, 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 we, we, did, we did a ceremony on that day and I watched the eclipse. And what was happening is I saw this big octopus-like creature coming out of the moon. I mean, coming out of the, 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 the eclipse, the sun actually, almost like creating a portal and it was sprinkling mm -hmm. like all of this code down on everything and i was like what the hell am i looking at some kind of interdimensional octopus are you kidding me so i start talking about this three months later stranger things 2 comes out and the whole basis of it is that there's this giant interdimensional octopus <laughs> trying to get into this reality <laughs> Yep. And I'm like, okay, had I seen Stranger Things first? Okay, I get it. But we were talking about this three months before Stranger Things came out. You know, here's the kicker too, though, is they were writing it you know, while all this was going on. So we didn't know they were writing it, obviously, but it was already written because it takes time to make these things and write these things and come up with these concepts, et cetera, et cetera. Where are all these concepts coming from? Again, I would say it's going inside when we create we are creators. And when we're creators, we're tapping into our raw consciousness. And that's why all of this comes out in artwork. It comes out in music. It comes out in photography. It comes out in all of that. Independent shows on Netflix, you know, that aren't, you know, corporate at all. They're basically third parties that are creating, just creating content and creating stories. It comes out when, like Chris said, when people you know are being who's creative. on the board of the, uh, Netflix, though? Sorry to interrupt, Sherry. I'm going to let you continue after this, but... When you said it's all independent stuff, they still have a, a Borg at the top. Yeah, and, they do. You know, um, there's some, there's there's somebody on the board that you might not know who that is, but I'm not going to say. I'm sorry. Please continue. Well, do you know? Do you know why? No, that no, no, is? no. Hold on, hold on. I want to know why. I want to. I want to know who it is who. too. I'll t I'll t I I'll tell you off air. Okay. And people probably already know. They're probably already saying in the comment section, "Who was president before Trump?" Oh, are you kidding? Oh, no, I'm not. I didn't know that. Oh, you know, oh, I can tell crazy. you why that is. I can tell you well, why yeah. that is. It's why is because that? these 
beings cannot create themselves. So they, they've always had to do this. Even back when Michelangelo was painting and when, uh, when all the great artists, Mozart was creating works of, of art in the form of music, they've always had to glean off of the talents and the creativity of people that are organic consciousness and do have that creativity because they don't have it themselves. So they always have to glean off of, of other people. And what they've done though for the last, 10,000 years essentially is limit what they don't like being put out and then let everything else you know fly freely because they profit off of it and um uh, what and you you know who I'm talking about now certain sites are now basically coming out and saying yeah that's exactly what we're doing you know things that we don't like we're not going to allow and things that you know are about puppies and you know stuff like that or how to wash your car better you know we'll we'll allow that all day long but anything having to do with certain topics we're just not allowing flat out well i mean because it's getting... they love you guys it's because they love you and cleaning your car better is important okay <laughs> that's what you should be focusing on focus on the puppies focus uh -huh. on the unicorns <laughs> focus on the invisible bigfoot because yep. the real problem is the invisible Bigfoot, and that's why the curfews are there, because Bigfoot comes out after 10 p.m., and he's invisible. And he's going to give you coronavirus, too, on top of everything else. Oh, yeah. Yep. He's totally contagious. Yep. Yep. Because okay. if pawpaw paw fruits, paw -paw fruits can catch coronavirus, you know, certainly Bigfoot can. It's super contagious. My, my YouTube has been full of hot chicks doing stretches and working out. Like, okay, I've been looking up like some workout videos, but not hot chicks working out and doing all of that. All of a sudden it just switched a couple days ago. Like it used to be filled up with like news. It used to be filled up with like um, uh, orange stuff, you know, all that stuff like that. And then all of a sudden it just like flipped and they're like, hey, pay attention to this. Here's some hot chicks doing splits and here's some hot chicks doing stretches and, the, and this and that, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, where did all this stuff come from? You know, like, like this, butt. look at this, butt. yeah, exactly, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, you can even see it. It's just uh, the programming. The programming runs deep. Dude, I get 90% of my uh, videos that I'm getting right now on YouTube recommends or like van conversions. But that makes sense because I did look up like converting my van. So now they're just throwing everything at me. Van conversion, van conversion, do this, do that, do this. But I get that. The algos picked up on what I'm looking for. But um, yeah, if you look up one or two of those videos, you'll start... Well, I, I bought a tonal. I don't know if you've heard of Becky, these. Becky, look at her butt. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of these tonal machines. It's like a home machine. You work out, you know, all that stuff, et cetera. So I bought a tonal. So I was looking up tonal reviews legitimately, and I've been working out a little bit. I mean, I've, I just started, so I haven't, you know, really done much yet, but um, it's just weird how everything just like, like flipped and it's like, no, 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 don't pay attention to what's going on over here. Don't pay attention to what's going on over here. Um, and they are propping up a lot of the BS and there's a lot of BS out there. A lot of it. Um, what was the most recent one? The monolith stuff, everything popping up. We're here in Las Vegas. We did a live stream over at the monolith. And then a friend of mine, um, uh, I saw the one in Utah. Did you go to the one in Utah? Yeah, Not I got it. I got there before they took it out. Now that one was there since at least 2016 because they had oh, Google oh, photos from the satellite that you could see. So then a bunch of people started, you know, mimicking that and trying, and which is cool. I, that's fine. But dude, I think that there's like, we, let me jump in for a minute because we were bringing up casting spells. The media is the most powerful spellcaster because it taps into everybody that watches it. It hooks you. And if you're watching the news, then you're going to be force fed what the news is throwing at you. And it's going to have an effect on you physically, mentally, and spiritually. And um, the first monolith that, you know, that one in Utah, and there was a possibility that this gentleman by the name of John McCracken made that monolith. Well, everybody was talking about release the Kraken, release the Kraken. You brought up the big giant oh. octopus, and your connection there. I was talking about the octopus in my videos also, but I was I was connecting it to like Enceladus out there by Saturn. And I was also connecting it to the uh, the Shahulu from H, uh, HP Lovecraft, right? But I was talking about the Shahulu and these cosmic octopuses. And then everybody else is talking about the Kraken. And I'm thinking of a connection. You're, you just connected the matrix dot there, and another, uh, another matrix sync. But then the monolith, that monolith seemed to be, if it was connected to John McCracken before he died, then it's like, release the Kraken. 
right? Release the Kraken. And also, the Star of Bethlehem's coming up, man. We got Saturn and Jupiter. I'm looking out right uh, just a few minutes ago, and it was gorgeous. You can see how we're going to get super close. You know what that means, don't you? There's going to be a new avatar. There's going to be a new Christ consciousness or something new that's going to be brought into the world to, uh, to represent the age of Aquarius very soon. Very soon. Remember? Bethlehem. Oh, Star of that's Bethlehem. True. Oh, Jesus. I right? Do. I think this time, though, instead of a Christ consciousness type of thing where we feel like we have to sacrifice ourselves for the good of everyone else, it's about pure understanding of what this reality is and who we are in, in it and who we are outside of it, if that applies. And I think that's what what this if if there if there's an age of aquarian if there's an aquarian type of energy shift that's occurring it has to do with people realizing who they are where they came from and understanding what this reality really is i i think christ consciousness is harmful overall to the consciousness of humanity in that it demands self-sacrifice at you know at the expense of your own understanding your own uh knowledge about the world and it's basically saying it's the same as as people saying everyone has to wear a mask every time they they're within even three or four feet of each other that you just have to good it for for the good of everyone else when in reality you're actually depriving your body of of antibodies that you need in order to fight off regular diseases you know we 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 pass things back and forth to each other besides covid that are beneficial bacteria and viruses that we need for our immune systems to stay healthy and for us to have the right amount of igg and igm antibodies you can't just get these antibodies from yourself you have to get them from everybody else and it's the same concept of self-sacrifice for really no reason other than to try to make the world a better place and and things like that when you if you don't re realize what this reality is then there's no point to doing that it's just sacrificing yourself well if i can add to that um oh i just lost my thought i'm sorry go ahead rex no, okay. Oh, 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 here it is. Here it is. Okay, this is something. This is something real quick. I went through the, the, this. This was something that I talked about, like I don't know, eight nine years ago. You know, we look for messiahs, right, et cetera, et cetera. Jesus in the age of Pisces was the fish. If we're moving into the age of Aquarius, Aquarius is the water bearer. So they have the messiah, the, you know, the coming of of the savior, et cetera, et cetera. Back then, well, if the new savior comes and it's the water bearer, well, who's the water bearer? Aquarius. Poseidon. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, we are. Yes. We are. Yes. We, are. Yes. we are. We are the water We're made bearer. up of what? Like 90, 90 80 percent water? 89 80, percent water, per yeah. Babies are made up of like 98 percent water? Mm-hmm. We're the water bearers. Yeah. So now the savior is you, ladies it's and gentlemen. It's humanity in general. Yeah. Yeah. I got something for you. Um, this is interesting because I love Enlil, although I fear Enlil because Enlil was, you know, he, had, he was like, hey, Humans, there's too many of them. Flood, great idea. Uh, but Enlil is the god of air, right? He's known as the god of the air. Especially if you go back and you read the ancient stuff, Enlil's connected to the god of the air. And well, the Aquarius, the, and Anki's the sea, right? Yeah, yeah. Anki's the sea, Enlil's his brother, Enlil's the air. And if you look at the age of Aquarius being an air sign... Does that and, and Jesus, I feel, is connected to Enki because of the water sign. If you look at the, the, the dual fishes, it's a water sign. So is this going back over to his brother Enlil? And if so, is Enlil going to drop the gauntlet again like he did thousands of years ago and clean house? I don't know. I think you might be onto something. I never thought about it from that perspective. I've always tied in Enlil with um, Yahweh, uh, you know, the God of the Bible, because mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of similarities. Um, when they were in the garden, for example, at least according to the Lost Book of Enki, 
um, Enki was watching um, Titi and Adape, and they were playing in the garden. And then Lil walks in, and they're like, "Why are they running around playing in the garden? Why aren't they working in the in the Abzu?" And he's like, "Look at them. They have a, dis- a, a divine spark in them. They have something different, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And and Lil was like, "No, no, no. They need to go work, and they need to be slaves. Get them out of the garden, you know, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. So I've always likened, um, um, you know, that that period of time to Enlil. But but you raise a really great point, Rex. I gotta I gotta really think about that. You know, it's also another thing that if we go back to the the separation, and now it seems like we're merging, and there's this unity. Maybe it will be uh, a whole new evolution of Enlil, or it'll be a combination of Enlil and Enki because of the new age. It seems as if they're pushing us into transhumanism. And bringing, you know, um, taking the the division into a unity. And if you go back and even look at the the Freedom Tower now, right, as a symbolic gesture, you know, they they get rid of the duality, um, and and then now you've got a single building there, the monolith, right, um, a single entity. It's it's supposed to be a single structure, um, a single stone, but the monolith they were showing us was actually that uh, <laughs> was the triad was was a three was a three sided um monolith which could actually mean enki enlil anu enki enlil inanna um which is the holy mother uh holy mother goddess the the queen of heaven because you're talking about the bible and you're talking about yahweh and um you can take a lot of these older tablets and enlil and enki and enki is oftentimes people think enki is the snake in the garden but when they connect lucifer with the lord of the air that's wrong. Lucifer is connected with Venus, and Lucifer, I think, is a is a lady. And I don't, um, I don't think, I think Lucifer is the scapegoat oftentimes because Venus is connected to Lucifer as the right, um, the morning, the eastern star, the morning uh, star, the, yeah, the morning star. The Freemasons uh, worship oftentimes. Uh, they people are like, oh, the Freemasons worship Lucifer. It's not the way you think. It's Venus. It's uh, Venus has a orbit that is a pentagram also which is very, uh, very unique, but it's a feminine energy and it's a very powerful energy. If you look at the Statue of Liberty, that's Inanna. And so um, you look at the Catholic and, and the Vatican and it's uh, sun worship. It's the sun. Uh, the Jewish religion, I think, revolves around Saturn and, and, and has a connection with Saturn worship. But I think that's when Saturn, if you go back in the day, I think at one point Saturn was actually a star. I think there's enough evidence to show that that's a very real plausibility. But But anyway, with all of this stuff that's going on right now, this new age that we are definitely going into, we've got this technology, we've got all these opportunities, but it's as if something's trying to get us all connected. And maybe when everybody's connected, then it creates a whole new consciousness and it feels that we need to be... we're still oh, here. hey, there I no, we're, hey. we're, no, we're still here. Okay, yeah, cool. I was like, what just happened? No, no, Did no, the no. Just we, just, we just had you on our screen. Um, now that you cool. can see our screen, though, I'm wondering, have you ever seen this? Yes. Okay. Okay. So Off the left, but is that a pineal gland in the ears? Uh, no, 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 no. That's the female reproductive system. Oh, hello. So, yeah, yeah. So you have the satanic ram's head, which is the female reproductive system. I'm sure you've seen the eye of Horus and being the inside of the brain. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. The pineal gland, or like the the eye of Horus, which is is like this. It's the, the thalamus. Gland, it's it's everything. Like, yeah. Yeah. When you cut the brain in yeah. half, you get an eye of Horus, essentially. So, um, so yeah, I think it goes to it, it goes back to the idea, in my opinion, that uh, what you just said that Lucifer is more of a feminine energy, but I would say like Lucifer. The, the Lucifer energy, in my opinion, is 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 like wisdom. Uh, I mean, think about this from a different perspective here, and I'm not saying that this is the right perspective. It's just a different perspective. What if we were indeed slaves within the garden, and then the wisdom was what set us free? And if you look at the Lost Book of Enki, it basically says that, that Enki is like, hey, wait a minute. These aren't slaves. They have something different. They have a divine spark to them, et cetera, et cetera. And then Lil walks in, and he's like, no, they're slaves. They're slaves. They're slaves. And Enki was like, no, no, no. There's something different. And he gave them something different because the first ones were created within clay pots but the second ones were actually adopting and titi were actually created within her womb so they actually had her essence to them as well 
that divine spark essence to them and then they were taken to nibiru and um they were to actually trick they were told not to to drink or eat anything when they were on nibiru because if they did they would have lived forever which i thought was kind of you know it was an agreement between enki and enlil etc cetera, etc cetera. you know there's a whole story behind those two but um what do you think about that well the Nibiru thing, see, I've not read but half a book of Zachariah Sitchin, and it was his 12th planet. I read half that book. I was, I thought it was a you know, pretty cool book. There was a couple things I didn't uh, agree with about the May and a couple other things. However, um, I respect Sitchin, and I think that he brought a lot of recognition to the, um, the Anunnaki, which is wonderful. But people that are ignorant about the Anunnaki, they'll say, oh, Zachariah Sitchin made him up. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I've got translations from the 1800s where scholars took these tablets that were found in archaeological digs, you know, in Nippur and Iraq and in the Middle East that were four or five, 6,000 years old. And these stories were telling um, of something that happened far before the tablets themselves. And um, the, the Enki and Ninma, there's a story called Enki and Ninma where they make, they're making people. Enki's asleep in the Abzu. His mom wakes him up and she's like, get up. The gods need, the gods are getting upset because they're doing all this work. And then, and, and we need you to make a replacement. So he's like, all right. And so he goes and he gets his lady and they're like, Hey, let's drink some beer and make people. And so they're, and this is a tablet from, uh, Nippur that I read translated by Oxford university. Anybody can go online and read this translation. It's called Enki and Ninma. And so they're drinking beer and they're making people and they're making mistakes along the way like some of them can't even stand upright some of them can't go to the bathroom some of them aren't male or female but my favorite is when they make the idiot and they're like what are we going to do with the idiot what are we going to do with the idiot and then he's like let's give the idiot to the king and i'm like oh that's where politics came from <laughs> Okay, so that echoes a lot in um, the Lost Book of Enki. Uh, that's that's one of my favorites from Sitchin. A lot of people will say that Sitchin's translations are wrong, et cetera, et cetera, and, and possibly so. I really don't know. I don't. I don't put too much. Well, who gets one hundred percent right all the time anyway? Yeah, right? yeah, if they're yeah. wrong, but then they're wrong for the wrong reasons that people are saying it's wrong. Well, I mean, it echoes the same story because there's a story in the Lost Book of Enki where they're actually in the laboratory, and um, Ninhursak and Enki were trying to uh, to 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 make people, and he started creating in clay pots. And, and exactly what you just said. He created one that couldn't walk. He recreated this. He created that. But uh, according to the Lost Book of Enki, Enki was like, instead of destroying them or treating them as subhuman um, or, or like not sentient, he, he gave them positions. Like w w exactly what you just said with the idiot. Okay, well, let's give them to the king. Let's do this. Let's do that, et cetera, et cetera. And then Enki went in her sack and said, I got an idea. How about we put these things inside of you? And she's like, no way. And he's like, come on. <laughs> I'm it's going to be great. That. It's going to be huge. You're going to love it. It's the best thing. You know, trust me. I That's know. That's like how to if make somebody people. told you, I make, we're the put great, <laughs> I make the best people. Nobody makes people better than me. And she, she agreed. And so, yeah. yeah, that's where Adopt and Titi came from. But no, that, that, that book is really interesting. And he's very persuasive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can be. Yes. He's very persuasive. <laughs> it runs in the family. <laughs> But I take that all as allegory. Allegory. So, I mean, if, think about Nibiru, you know? I mean, if, think about it again from uh, from a computer simulation perspective. I could be talking about, again, Atlantis, where we came from from outside, coming into this reality here. But again, it's ancient people trying to communicate these ideas about computer simulation, about an outside world, about a world that doesn't exist here, but trying to communicate it with the best language that they possibly have there at that time. So now we have a different way to communicate. And this. it would also make sense why Sitchin's translations, they weren't wrong. They were mistranslated because of a lack of understanding that these these people were trying to relay concepts that were way beyond the technology that they had personally. And so if you don't have any understanding of how electricity works or how uh, you know, computers work or how a simulation works or virtual reality or virtual anything. If you don't have that understanding, then it is, it's going to sound like magic tricks or it's going to sound like miracles or it's going to sound like, you know, something, you know, people came from the sky. Um, when, if you put it under the lens of, this is a computer simulation and these beings came from outside of the simulation into the simulation and created these other beings that were 
of a more of a more advanced psychological and and intellectual nature and cognitive nature than the animals that they already created then yeah it would it would make sense that it would be said like that and that Sitchin's translations would seem off the wall and like crazy talk because it 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 is if you don't have the right lens to look at it through. I mean, you can go into virtual <laughs> you know, reality. Oh, I'm sorry. I, let me just say this real quick. You can go yeah, into virtual yeah. reality right now and create a person. Like there's programs that exist in order to do that, and you create a little replica. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You create a little thing in virtual reality. It walks around. It does this. It does that. Et cetera, et cetera. Well, so I had a dream before I ever even read any of the tablets before i ever got into the anunnaki and this was years ago i had a dream where i was actually in a laboratory and i was making people and i was like oops i didn't make this one right and so i, I had a dream that was very similar to that tablet which i thought was bizarre because going back and, and it was a very vivid dream it was the most vivid dream that i'd ever had i knew i was dreaming and i was manifest i was making these people as i was having this dream in this laboratory type setting and then years later i read that story and i'm like whoa well, and it took a few times to read the story before it kind of connected, but I feel like I was, I don't know, I, I don't feel like I was Enki, but I feel like I was kind of ha having a similar, like I was looking through uh, an avatar or something and seeing what happened at one point or something. I don't know how to explain it, but it was, it was pretty fun. <laughs> it was pretty funny, but let's talk about this for a minute. Let's talk about how Terrence McKenna said, we, sh we are living in a symbiotic relationship with something that disguises itself as an extraterrestrial invasion so as not to alarm us. Now, if that doesn't alarm you, then I don't know what in the... I mean, that's a pretty deep statement right there. So you're telling me that aliens aren't even aliens? So what the freak are aliens? So, But if we're in a simulation, like you said, and my friend Colleen Black, actually, she's an amazing artist. She had an experience, a shamanic experience, where she, sh where she saw through the veil, beyond the veil, and she saw sound, like dripping colors, and then there were some areas that looked like they were dying, and it really spooked her out. She's like, we need to fix the matrix. I'm like, you're right, we do. We need to fix the matrix. So we could be in a simulation. However, I don't know if it is... Now, and that, then you could get into the light beings, right? The first beings that came to Earth were light beings. The very, like, this was way before animals. Way, like, the very first entities were light beings. Well, if you take a computer and you go into the computer as an avatar, you're like a light being, and then you manifest. So light is just condensed, or matter is just condensed light. So that would make sense. However, I think that Saturn and the rings of Saturn and the moon and the positioning of the moon, the positioning of our sun and the rings of Saturn, I think all of, and our carbon bodies, I think that this ha and the frequencies that the, the rings emit, I think that's the, the matrix that we're in. I think that's the, the simulation. And they're somehow manipulating that. Like they've tapped into the Brooklyn current of Saturn, which well, that's what made it a sun. And now you see the cube and the cube is reminds me of the Teflon and the cube reminds me of the new Jerusalem that, that's going to descend from heaven. So I'm wondering if when it descends from heaven in Revelation, if it like detaches from Saturn, it's like, <laughs> and then everybody gets assimilated. You Hello. Assimilated. <laughs> that's assimilate. pretty. That's pretty interesting. Um, it reminds me of Hadi Bove, Hadi Bow. Uh, it's the pronunciation is kind of up in the air. This was back in 2012. Crow 777. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with him. He was filming the moon, and he 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 filmed what he said was the lunar wave, and he watched this wave go down the moon, and he filmed it multiple times. And um, we were talking to Brooks Agnew um, about this, and he actually he brought up a really good point, and I wish Crow would have done this. Would take multiple cameras and film it simultaneously and if every single one of those cameras picked it up then we could eliminate the idea that it's just a camera anomaly however uh, he filmed it so many times that he started to to um, to look at the uh, look at the moon and, and and this just went viral you know this whole moon um, uh, moon uh, uh, wave lunar wave thing and even David Ike I mean we had him back on in like 2010 and he was talking about the moon matrix and we weren't anywhere nearly consciously as well ev evolved as we are now and we're just sitting back and going I think Dave has lost his mind here a little bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> but realistically, though, David was really onto something back then. Hadi Bauv supposedly is this Russian scientist that was disclosing all this information about how we're living inside of a matrix. Um, they make program changes through the moon, through Saturn, through all these other different planetary um, things. And essentially what this matrix is, is that there's an intergalactic war taking place on the other side. And we've all, we're all basically prisoners here inside of this matrix. We've been like, we're like POWs. And you like take the consciousness, you transfer it into light. Because when you remove the consciousness from a body, it turns into light, digitize the consciousness and throw it into the machine. So we all come in essentially as light beings. I don't necessarily agree with that whole analysis, but it's funny that other people are also talking about very similar things and talking about the moon and planets and, and causing, you know, different changes and so on and so forth. And there's some cultures reportedly, I haven't been able to verify this, but I've heard this from enough people to, to say, you know, there might be some truth to this. I just haven't been able to find a source, but there's some cultures that, that report that never reported the moon. Like the moon didn't exist during that time, during those cultures. And the moon, it, it dictates like women's menstrual cycles. It dictates uh, the, the waves of the ocean. You get the term lunacy for from the moon you know the moon definitely has a, a big effect on us and we did a, a shamanic ceremony um on the super blood moon it was like in like 2017 or something like that it was like this super blood moon uh and then there was one other thing to it oh and it was an eclipse at the same time super blood moon eclipse or something like that and we're sitting outside expecting this big wonderful experience and that moon just came down on us like walmart lights and like floor like we were under fluorescent lights and i mean it just made the experience like heavy dense we were like we got to get in the house let's get uh, let's get out of this moonlight here i mean it was just coming down just hard on us um but there was definitely something to the moon energy for sure oh here's here's another new theory of mine the moon itself is the original anunnaki arc right they knew a catastrophe was going to happen so they they bring this massive ship and they place it where it needs to be and they load it up with as much stuff as they can did noah have an arc too probably but we're talking an arc that could withstand a solar flare that would take the world back to the beginning uh, as far as civilization goes and there's plenty of evidence man i think that there's been just in the past there was one between five and eight hundred years ago like a major cataclysm and the history that they're telling us is they can rewrite history in a hundred years dude Look at what they've done in a hundred years. It's absolutely amazing. They're looking thousands of years ahead while most people are looking 10 years ahead. Well, most people are, you know, going day to day. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, I get it. Well, look at look at what's going valid. on on YouTube right now. I mean, there's a purge of information oh, happening yeah. everywhere. They're yeah. trying to create to to control the narrative, dictate everything, change history, you know, so on and so forth. It's they do it, they do it, they do it all the time. Um I had a point I was going to bring up again. I lost my train of thought. Well, it's sure. like humanity's going through what the Egyptians called the, the weighing, the weighing of the heart ceremony, and the weighing of the heart ceremony. What in ancient Egypt was essentially when a consciousness is finished with with a life, it would it it was a way to ascertain if you're ready to go home or to you know go to a what they called the field of reeds is you know like a heaven type of type of place where you're basically just rewarded um in indefinitely you know it's a place of rest and what would happen is you'd you'd go through this ceremony where your heart would be weighed up against the feather of truth it was the feather of ma'at and ma'at was she wasn't really a goddess as much as she was an idea of justice and truth and real justice, not the kind of justice that you hear about on the streets nowadays. It's the justice of facing up to who you are, not what you've done, but who you really are when all of the ego is stripped away and when your soul is laid bare. And you really judge yourself. You really do. Um, you judge yourself without any of the ego trying to say, oh, I'm not really like that. Or, oh, well, I'm only like that because other people are like that. Um, all of that falls away. And the only thing left is the pure truth of who you are. And that's weighed up against the feather of truth. And if your heart is heavier than that feather, 
or if it's lighter than that feather. You know, that's another misconception about the weighing of the heart ceremony. You hear, oh, you're, if your heart is lighter than a feather. No, it's it has to be right in balance with truth. And you have to be completely 100% honest with yourself. And that's what that means. The weighing of the heart ceremony isn't about being lighthearted because that'll get you, either one will get you thrown into um, the wheel of reincarnation. And that's symbolized by the alligator with the uh, the crocodile. Amut. Um, uh, Is it Amut? No. No. Uh, yeah, it's Amit. 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 Amit's symbol is on her forehead, and it's a it's a swastika, which is the it's the wheel of reincarnation. It's the wheel of balance. It's you're imbalanced. Whether it's your heart's lighter than a feather or heavier than a feather, you are out of balance and you're not ready to face up to who you really are. So you get thrown back into the wheel of reincarnation. And I think that's what's happening on a glo- on a on a matrix level now. It's it's this entire universe is going through this process where it's having to admit the truth about how we are and the understanding of what we're in. And I think every time this happens, and I think it, we've gone through these cycles where this has happened before, and we failed every time. And that's where you get Atlantis. That's where you get the flood story. That's where you get all these stories of cataclysm and destruction and catastrophe, which it, it means star destroying. Catastrophe means star destroying. Um, when you have these periods where horrible, you know, wipe, you know, everything's wiped clean, like you said. It's not be. It's not out of punishment. It's not because of overpopulation. It's nothing like that. It has to do with humanity not being ready to face the fact of what this place is and what it's for and who we are as human beings. And we're going through it again. And I'm hoping that this time we get it right and we we are able to avoid that catastrophe. Uh, but I'm not sure. Well, if I can jump in for a second, because this Please. is the thought that I had earlier in the Lost Book of Enki, and I really think you should read this, Rex. It's a great read. Um, it talks about how they had to evacuate. The council met, and they knew Nubiru was going to come back, and they knew that this catastrophe was coming, and what they were asking themselves at the time is, do we tell the people? They had already created civilizations at that time. It was breakaway civilizations. They weren't really using them as slaves anymore at that point. Um, they they specifically created uh, wars amongst them so they can keep them under control. They gave them beer and stuff like that to keep them under control as well. It's interesting that that that, that the, the, the book says that. Um, but they all met, and the council decided, look, we already went against the creator of Ball's law by first of all coming to a planet that was underdeveloped number two uh messing with the genetics of the hominoids that were on that planet um so we've already done two major violations against the creation create uh, against the 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 creator of all but it was out of necessity to save our own planet so we can't do another another violation of of that we have to leave the humans to their own to their own um fate and Enki, well, it was in her sack, actually. She went to, uh, to Enki and she said, hey, um, you created these things. These things were created from my womb. You must save life, save life, save life. And so at that point, um, you get the whole arc story and everything like that. But it does talk about how they went into outer space during this whole catastrophe. And I wonder if that ties into what you were talking about, the moon. Maybe when they went to outer space, they didn't actually go up in ships, but maybe they actually built something, built something like the moon at that point. Um, and that's where they've been hiding out ever since. Um, going back to the other point, the destruction and this, uh, the, the catastrophes, I wonder if this is a computer simulation as I feel it to be, um, what if this is what happens? The consciousness of the people in this simulation it has to get to a certain point we start to tap into different energies you know nuclear power you know things like that and if we can survive all of that with a consciousness that's elevated enough to care for one another love one another so on and so forth we can transcend that and use those energies for the greater good whereas right now we're using those energies to blow each other up with and and taking it even a step further what if the paradoxical catastrophic event is creating a simulation within a simulation 
vibration. And we're coming up to that point right now where our technology is, is ahead of our consciousness. We have the ability to blow ourselves up and we have the ability to create a simulation within a simulation as well. And it all seems to just be crumbling down on, on itself. And then if I can chime in one more on one more point you made earlier, the Terrence McKenna thing, Terence McKenna talked about time wave zero. And over the last the last year, we've been talking about how every timeline has been eliminated. Like we've been jumping from one timeline to another, to another, to another, trying to find that optimal timeline. But we're getting to that point of singularity right now, right? We're at the point of singularity. We said singularity is going to be around uh, around 2021. You know, we're going to see if we're going to go down the negative timeline or positive timeline, but there's going to be a singular timeline. And then all of a sudden, all these monoliths start popping popping up everywhere, which again goes back to what you were saying, the singularity, everything is single. And then I never tied in Freedom Tower to it. But again, Freedom Tower, 9-11, the destruction of duality moving into a singular timeline once again, it's all making sense, all coming together. This is fascinating. Zorg! <laughs> yep. I'm glad Zorg's with me because Zorg actually told me the, the whole blueprint, all the plans to um, galactic domination. And, and Zorg's going to run in 2024 for intergalactic leader. It's going to be Zorg and Ozzy, Zorg and Ozzy Stern. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a great chance for intergalactic leader for those guys because, you know, I mean, hello. So can you do the Zorg thing again? Well, let me get Zorg. Hold on a second. Okay. Back to you for a minute. I'll get Zorg to come okay. on. Because that sounded like a Zorgasm. Oh, dude, you have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, my. Oh, my. So this is a fascinating conversation. Yes, I didn't it think is. it would go in this direction. We've been covering different stuff I'm glad um, it did. Uh, over at Beyond the Veil, and it's nice to get back into the esoteric stuff and the ancient yeah, stuff and everything it really like is. that. Oh, there's Zorg. Makes the heart sore. My name is Zorg. Ack, ack, ack. We come in peace. You leave in pieces. <laughs> ah, silly earthlings. Oh, where's your face diapers? Where are your face diapers so I don't have to smell you? I don't want to smell your breath. You all need to wear face diapers, and now China recommends wearing diapers also. So don't just wear a face diaper, wear a real diaper, and then that way. Oh, you silly earthlings. What is wrong with you? What have you become? Oh, you so... Well, well, I can tell you one thing for sure, Zorg, is that you've evolved way beyond us. You have clearly your brain outside of your head. Most humans, unfortunately, don't even have half a brain. So we got to get to that level first. I think that's the main problem. See, so, you know, and also this blocks 5G radiation, as you can see. Ack, ack, ack. It has an EMF liner inside of it that will block 4G, 3G, 2G, 5G. But it won't block 69G. <laughs> Well, that's the one we want to keep, though. So that's the good one. That's the one we're shooting for, actually. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was freaking phenomenal. I love it. <laughs> you know, my favorite thing, and we do this on Beyond the Veil all the time, is I inject a lot of humor into it because we talk about such serious topics sometimes. And realistically, consciousness is a very serious topic. It's something that's very, very, very deep. And if we don't have that balance of keeping it light and, and making it fun, then, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Not dull, psycho. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, have you seen, have you seen, by the way, you know, now that you mention a, that quote from The Shining, have you seen the sequel to The Shining, Dr. Sleep? 
I watched a few minutes of it. Kristen watched the whole thing, and I could I could only take a few minutes of it when that when that chick was like sucking the soul out of that yeah, um, that, that little kid. I'm like, really okay, dude, I'm one. No. Oh, yeah, right. this, the, the, this is the pizza related that stuff. Is disclosure. What it is. That this is, is what exactly it is. This is exactly what's going on with the pizza related yeah, stuff. Yeah, Chris saw this. I watched it, and I was like, because you know we've been talking about this for years. I've yeah. seen it in the ayahuasca realm. I've seen the way the energy transfer works. I don't want to get too graphic. Back in I try not to a lot of people can't stomach yeah. it um but um this i was i was shocked i mean this yeah. is stephen king basically saying this is how they do it this is how they go after these kids this is how they find them they're looking for the light within them they can right. see the light etc cetera, etc cetera. and in the film i don't want to give too much away of it but what happens is the guy's constantly drinking mm -hmm. and he's constantly drinking to try to shut his light light down shut his light down yeah because they're looking for him so and they, they know they can feed off of him right right and that the only reason why he's been able to be undetected for his whole life wasn't so much that that black man uh that was in the first movie was was protecting him so much as it was as soon as he became old enough to do so he just started drinking heavily and you know that that drinking was what dulled the light and i think that's what's happening with a lot of people is when you when you're looking at drug addiction or alcoholism um and i'm not talking about you know drug use I'm, or or you know uh, drinking socially I'm talking about people who have a problem with it a lot of it is about trying to shut that light off because for for whatever reason when they're their genuine selves negative entities are attached or become attached to them too quickly and we don't teach spirituality to our children we teach religion but we don't teach spirituality and how to protect yourself from negative entity attachments or negative people attaching themselves to you and f basically psychic vampirism we don't pr we don't teach our children how to protect themselves against this so the only thing that they've found helps with that and to keep that away from them is to use drugs or to drink to excess and that shuts that light down so but if you, going back to, to well, doctors can, before go you go too far before you go too far off, I'd love, I want to chime in on this. The opposite Please. is true, true though. Right. So people, you know, the crack addicts, the meth addicts, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. They invite those entities within them. Yes, you know, here in Las Vegas, there's there's a pretty big problem in certain areas of Las Vegas. They've cleaned it up, but during COVID, it was really bad because nobody was cleaning the up the streets. Yeah. They were all running loose. It was like Night of the Living Dead. And I'll watch them, and they walk around in circles sometimes. Sometimes they're just yelling at just nobody. I've seen them defecating in the streets, and something is wrong with them. And when and 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 if you happen to encounter one of them, they have this energy to them that is like sulfur energy. It's the best way that I can describe it. They're they're possessed by something. So I just wanted to make a distinction between what you're talking about and and that. Um, because in October, well, no, not October, August, September, I found myself just instinctively wanting to dim my light. I was smoking a ton of weed and I don't know why. I was just smoking it like, I don't want to tap in. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. It just felt like something energetically around that time period was feeding on was feeding on everybody. And I was shutting my light down. And then when I started talking about it on the show, people were like, holy crap, I've been doing the same thing. I've been smoking a lot of weed. I've been drinking, not in excess or anything like that. But I've, I've, there were years that went by without drinking. Now I have wine. I've got a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue down stairs you know i was drinking johnny walker blue listening to tool and sheree's like what's going on here and i'm like i just feel like i have to dim my light just right now but the time will come around december when it's got to turn back on again and sure enough around december i haven't smoked weed in like i don't know three weeks or something like that it was just one of those things like i knew it was time to bring it down now i know it's time to bring it back up again you know it's interesting that they call alcohol spirits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know somebody it's, you're Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say you're doing something. You know, I mean, you're now um, as far as dimming the light goes, that that makes sense. The uh, whatever you're putting in your body is 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 like putting a goo around it, like a toxic sludge almost. Right, and I think it has to do because you know there are dissenters uh, that are saying I think it's the opposite, where people are more likely to be attached by to by negative entities when they drink. 
That's true for people who don't emit a lot of light energy naturally. People that, you know, have this, they have certain gifts for things like divination or healing, being able to heal people or being able to do astrology just right off the top of your head or, you know, people that have these creative gifts or divination gifts, they are emitting a huge amount of light naturally. And so these negative entities attach themselves so they can feed off that light. But then if you have somebody that doesn't have that creativity, doesn't really have a whole lot of spark to them, then what they are are just a low energy feeding trough when they do ingest those chemicals and substances that bring their energy down and, you know, I mean, basically, they become a, a buffet for different types of beings. And I think what Dr. Sleep is talking about are more, instead of negative entities in the sense of, of like, d demons and things like that, it's talking about negative entities in the form of humans that aren't really human. And it's, you know, I don't know how much... I mean, I can break. I can break it with, down yeah, real quick. Yeah, yeah. And you I think break a lot of people quick. would agree on certain levels because we can take it on many different levels here. Yeah. What we're dealing with here ultimately is vampirism. Whether you want to, whether it's spiritual vampirism, adrenochrome type stuff. I mean, um, Elizabeth Bathory type stuff. You know, there seems to be an element within this matrix that feeds on whatever. I, I again, I don't want to get too graphic. But, I mean, you even go back to Roanoke. Remember the story of Roanoke? Mm -hmm. And they found all those coffins. And inside of the coffins, the, they found the, the bodies the with stakes, with stakes through, the through them. And uh, the whole colony just kind of disappeared. Yep. You know, I think we've always had this reptilian type of, type of element within this matrix. Yeah. And they are the hackers. They are the invaders. Right. They're the viruses. Um, I, you know, I think they're greys at a, a certain level, but they can shape shift into different things. They can inhabit bodies as well, so they can take on actual avatars, but they're not supposed to be in this matrix. And so when we talk about virus in the matrix, this is what we're talking about. And back yeah. to what you were saying, aliens, I think it's much more plausible that these aliens are coming from somewhere much closer, mm -hmm. underground or perhaps interdimensionally. Right. Because coming from hundreds of thousands of billions of light years away doesn't make any sense but if they're doing it inter interdimensionally if they're right here i mean what do they what does science say that that the next dimension is like 13 inches away from us or something mm -hmm. like that if they're if they're literally 13 inches away from us that makes much more sense in my humble opinion right what do you think rex it, it does but that's also in a sense because i think that all the time i'm like it makes sense that they've got to be somewhere a lot closer maybe they're us uh, in the past, they lived through a cataclysm or multitudes of cataclysms, and they've had to genetically change themselves, and they spend a lot of time on spaceships, but they're still from Earth. Um, you know, they've, they're they from the moon. They could be from Mars. I think that the Watchers actually came from Mars, um, because when you get into a lot of stuff in Egypt, and if you look at El Cairo in Egypt, the definition is Camp of Mars, and if you follow some of the stories, biblically speaking, I think it would make a lot of sense that even the Book of Enoch is describing um, people that came from Mars, and they're describing them as the fallen angels that have sex with Earth women, so they get banned from heaven. Well, maybe they just got banned from their positions uh, of wherever they were, you know, where they're the airline, Galactic Airlines, Mars uh -huh. One. You're not allowed to come back anymore because you got horny and had sex with Earth chicks. How could you, <laughs> Mars One? And then he's like, "Dude, I'm sorry, man." It's um, like, how can you not? <laughs> How can you not? <laughs> well, again, in, in the Lost Book of Enki, that same story is repeated. Um, they had the uh, the workers here, and they wanted companions. And so the mm -hmm. Enki was taking on human companions, and he had human wives. And everybody was looking at him like, what's going on here? And then Why can't we both Enki and Enlil... Both of them, there's different stories of them seeing the younger ones bathing in the in the lake, and they were like, "Oh, I want to go check these out." And then they were all critics, like, "Hey, what are you doing here?" And um, you know, there was a split, like, like you know, with 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 Enki, uh, Marduk, 
Um, uh, there was an issue. He was running off. He went through the pyramid, supposedly. That's how the, the, he was hiding the smugglers... In the pyramid, ta- yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why that he was hiding in the Great Pyramid, so on and so forth. And then there was an agreement that Enki would leave in exchange for Marduk, and it had to do because of something Enlil did, and it was a forgiveness for something Enlil did uh, in regards to that. And, you know, so there was all these all these different stories. But um, there was the Ajiji, too. So the Anunnaki is more at least in Sitchin's translations is a title it's not a it's not a race but rather it's a title those who from, yeah, from heaven absolutely. came to earth the ajiji yeah. were stationed on mars and so they would right. take the gold from here take it to mars weigh, weigh it on mars and then um uh, uh take it off to nibiru so the, the 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 these species who lived on mars were actually called ajiji um, and then the Ajiji came down here and they're like, hey, what's going on here? We're all up here on Mars by ourselves. We have no fun whatsoever. We have no women. We have nothing like that. Mars needs women. You know, I'm sure you've heard that that title of that movie before. And um, uh, they came down here and they saw that the that that Enki and all of them had human companions and they wanted human companions, too. So it's funny. It, it, all these stories are all echoing in so many different places. Humans. It's the new black. Yep. <laughs> oh, Enki. Enki. Um, well, who can so, blame you? I mean, look at Sharif, for example. She's aww. gorgeous. Human women are beautiful. <laughs> yeah, they are. And I can say that myself, too. Um, especially when you, when they have that light coming from them, you know, and uh, they're, I don't know. They're, I think that there's something special about humans that emit all of this light that the you know beings that are interdimensional either want to take advantage of or they want to partner up with it and mate with it and they've and that's essentially what was going on with the with the ajiji is that they needed companions but i think it was more about um you know needing partners and needing to be able to um create lives here instead of just being worker worker bees that you know live in a 1984 type of situation where you don't have a family you don't have any any real companions in your life you just have work and well that could have been what that was i don't know how um i i don't know how that whole thing works you know in the in the context of a simulation i we need to read the we need to read the i I think a lot of it is allegory but you know i do i do want to say this though um i mean human women are beautiful especially the ones with the bigger butts i think rex you know you look like a like a big butt kind of guy um somebody who appreciates that and and I, i i appreciate that and the reason that i appreciate that is because if somebody likes big butts i know that they cannot lie (laughs) <laughs> i can't even go there man because um huh i like what are we talking thing. about <laughs> zorg zorg made me say it zorg's fault zorg it's a meme um, it's a meme it's a meme it says i only trust people that like big butts because i know they cannot lie i, I know the song okay. i know the song I'm I, I totally get it dude no it's cool i'm just having fun and, all right yeah you know i mean it, it, so imagine going to antarctica and then you get you know you're there by yourself and then you then but you are from somewhere else and then you you know your boss is like now don't be getting cozy with those nordic chicks because you know you'll get yourself in trouble and you're like okay you have to sign a contract you won't but you're there and you're working and you're lonely and and you meet this beautiful nordic gal that you fall in love with and there you go now you're fired and then years later people write a biblical scripture about you about how you're a fallen angel and you gave this nordic chick technology that came from this other place and she wasn't going to tell anybody but she got mad at you and she told somebody so then it just all went downhill from there and uh then you've got another bible and you've got another book of you could call that the the book of uh life the book of life right oops sorry i fell in love and then things happen but um, this is great, man. This is awesome. And I appreciate the opportunity to hang out with you guys. It's been a lot of fun and it's getting kind of cold. I'm probably, I got two and a half more hours to drive. I'm going to be dropping off the van tonight. So, um, getting the, um, airbag fixed or whatever. And then I'm getting it converted into a mobile command center. That's got a place, you know, like sleep and just pulling out a sleep bag. I like could actually have a bed back there 
Nice. Cap. That's nice. nice. Okay, I want to clear something up because somebody got something seriously confused in the chat room here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I said when I, I like I, when I appreciate Rex because he seems like a man that likes big butts. I wasn't saying that Rex has a big butt. I was <laughs> saying that he seems like a yeah, like a man that appreciates big butts, and I appreciate that because I know that he cannot lie. Yeah. So he wasn't clearing that up in the chat room, somebody was like, Rex's "I think Chris butt. is going bisexual." I'm like, "No, no, no." I wasn't saying no, right. no, 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 no. <laughs> clear, let me clear that up right here, right now. It's okay to be bisexual. We were talking about human not. women. Let's keep it in context. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, while we're pulling the jokes out, why not? The other day, I'm, uh, I got Diamond invites us to go hang out with his friend um, Diamond from Oppenheimer Ranch. They've got um, they've got these new friends in town. I'm like, okay, that sounds fun. And so f- it's for Thanksgiving. We go down there. We meet. Um, we meet diamond's friend and diamonds with leah and um i don't remember the, the gal's name and she's um she, i think she's single now but she's got a you know she's living with her 19 year old son or whatever and uh, everything was everything was you know not even awkward yet nothing was awkward things are fine and then she asks where i'm from and i'm like well i'm i'm from utah and i got she got this weird look in her eyes i'm thinking oh she's probably you know wondering if i'm mormon and i'm like and i'm more and i was joking when i said this i'm like and i'm mormon and then, and then I'm like, okay, she's thinking something. And then, and then a lot of times growing up in Utah, if you would ever go on vacation and you went to somewhere else, like, oh, you're from Utah. Are you Mormon? And then they would ask the most, they would ask the stupidest questions like, oh, are, um, do you have more than one wife? You know, are you a polygamist? And so I was just like, I have this uncanny way to make things awkward. Like I can s- somehow psych, I'll psychically pick something up and somebody, then I'll make a joke out of it. And then something tells me not to make a joke out of it, but I do anyway. <laughs> have you ever, I don't know if you ever had that happen to you, but it happens to me a lot. And so I'm it like, happens to me all yeah, the time. and I'm yeah. Mormon. Yeah. I go, oh, yeah, and I'm Mormon. And she goes, oh, okay. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And, and I'm also, you know, I'm a polygamist. I have more than one wife. And um, <laughs> she's, like, she's like, oh, great. She's like, well, you should have brought him over. And I'm like, no, I'm just joking. And she's like, well, and then she's, I was, I was like, oh, no, I was totally joking. And she's like, well, I come from a poly something or something um, where we all, um, you know, we all have sex with everybody. And, and Diamond walks over and goes, yeah, they have sex with transvestites and stuff. And he walks off. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I, I just, it's got, it's getting more and more awkward, right? I don't care what somebody's sexual preference is. Just the fact that I made that joke. And then out of all people that I'm going to make that joke, she's like, oh, yeah. You have to Holy pick God. somebody that's polyamorous. We were, we were, I was, yeah. I was in Utah. I was walking around. I got two, two Utah things I want to throw at you real quick. I was walking around Utah and um, I was with a coworker, a female coworker, and we were going through the temple and all the girls were looking at me. And I'm like, why are all the girls checking looking at out, me? Yeah. They were like checking me out. And I'm like, what's going on here? And she's like, well, you're only with one girl. They think you're available. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but here's here's what, rather, what I really wanted to, to throw at you. I had this weird dream. I'm in Utah and my car breaks down. I pull over and this family helps me. I go to their house and this guy is working on my car. And then he walks up to me and he just looks at me and he goes, do you know anything about solipsism? And I said, no, I don't know what that is. And he says, neither do I. <clears throat> and I woke up and I looked it up. Do you, are you familiar with solipsism? Solipsism no. is, a, is a philosophy that you, you are the only real person in your reality. And that's it. And Everyone everybody else, else is, is just a, a figment, is of, a your, figment of, your of your reality. Imagination. Yeah. But what the hell's going on here? I, I, this strange guy in this dream comes up to me and says, do you know anything about solipsism? I've never heard the term before, ever. My theory is that it was a part of his brain talking to the active part of his brain. And it was basically like, because it, he, when he said, I don't, you know, I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know what it is either. He, it, it's being honest because it's still you that was asking that. It was just a different part of you that okay, was asking w- that. Where did this word I mean, solipsism come from, that. though? Why did this weird person in my dream? I mean, I guess it would be a paradox because if it was, if if we were really living in solipsism type of a type of matrix where it's only one consciousness and everything else, then it had to be my own consciousness it telling had me to something that I didn't know. It's weird. And what do you make of that, Rex? Okay, so for your circumstances, totally different. Like whoever is going to have that dream, it's it's going to have a, a certain meaning to that person. And I think it might have something to do with what you were doing the night before and maybe something you watched on TV or it just made you think about that form of identity. And it's, it, it's going to have like, like you need to listen to yourself. You need to trust yourself. That's what that dream tells me. Trust your instincts, trust yourself. And even if something seems way out there and like something that's not real, 
Well, it is real because it's connected to you somehow and you need to figure out a way to, um, to, to work with it. Um, but that's what I see. Trust your instincts. And I also, if I was to have that dream and I was to tell Kristen that dream, she would probably laugh and she would say, that's because you're a narcissist, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> You buy me a house right now. I'm sure. Did Christian calls I'm, I'm you a narcissist too. I'm surprised <laughs> no, Sheree had, didn't no, say that. <laughs> say like, okay, Rex. Now you know, she's diagnosed me. Turn. She's diagnosed me as a narcissist, and so I said, okay, let's see. And I took the narcissist test, and I came out with well, like a narcissist. one point out of like twenty. And she took it, and she got three points out of twenty. So, huh, huh, huh. hello. <laughs> yeah, but I answered honestly. I answered honestly too. You were right there. I was going through the answers with you, and I was like, you know. Anyways, man, this has been this has been this phenomenal. Has been so I do want to leave your audience with this though. Yep. Um, you know, we are in the in the middle of the Matrix reset. Mm -hmm. uh, December twenty twenty two is, in my opinion, where the clock ends. So we're at the halfway point right now. I don't know what's going to happen in December twenty twenty two. I, I can tell you this for sure. I didn't know what was going to happen in May of 2018 at the Great Pyramid. Um, I thought that when I went into the experience, the Great Pyramid was going to be like this booster rocket. It was going to boost me out of the matrix, all this stuff. Experience turned out totally different than what I expected. Mm -hmm. I expected to come out glowing and going, oh, my children, look how, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I went through PTSD afterwards. Yeah, I, I went through this we whole, you know, mental turmoil trying to reintegrate into the matrix. So nothing that Chris geo imagines ever turns out into what the actual outcome actually is yeah. the experience is because on an ancient soul level i know but the chris geo mind gets in the way a lot so i can't tell you what's going to happen uh, between december 2020 uh, between now and december 2022 all i can say is that it's up to each and every one of you to manifest the reality that you want Absolutely. i think that's well, that's what it comes down to maybe the timeline of singularity is all dependent on each and every one of you and what you want to manifest for your optimal timeline right on right on and and i wanted to just say one thing too um i want as far as like um being the change you want to see that is that is so important right now because if you can actually put into action what you want to see even if it's at a micro level it will have um incredible results so so keep doing that and focus on that and also i'm a fan of netflix right i mean i do like netflix and, and you are right there's a lot of independent opportunities there with netflix and i was kind of poking fun and and first of all i don't have anything against um president obama right i just thought it was funny that a lot of people that somebody of that stature would be in a position of that level right like who would act like really the former president's now with netflix it's just it's like wow politics are everywhere so, so that's kind of where I was going with that. It seems like it's very difficult to get out of polls of, you know, politics, no right. matter what, even with independent people can go in there independent, but then once it gets to the very top level, then what? Exactly. You know, exactly. So, which, well, I mean, the yeah. only place you're going to find real truth realistically is leakproject.com and beyondtheveilradio.com. Yeah, that's TFR it. Live. That's the last bastions of truth, tfrlive.com yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, because but we're just a big live action role playing game over at League Project. <laughs> for entertainment purposes only. Well, no, it's just not. It's, it's not just about that. It's about okay if they're going to take politics. Sorry, I muted you. Keep me. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. Um, you just muted shit <laughs> twice in a row. If they're going to, if they're going to involve themselves into other things besides politics, then we can talk about politics you know i mean we can discuss these things in the context of they're going outside of the bounds of what they're asking us not to go outside the bounds of so i think it's totally fair at this point to to freely freely discuss these things because they're they're not sticking to their their own playing field they're trying to affect all playing fields and make everything political and, well, and they're putting it in your face and they're too. putting it right in your face do as i say not as i do mm -hmm. again I, I i don't want to get political but if you see what happened with some of these governors mm -hmm. as soon as they do this totalitarian lockdown orders they go and do the opposite i right. think it's by design to show you it's for you it's not for them right but realistically everything's upside down we have the power we create reality exactly. our consciousness creates reality the way we think the our actions etc cetera, etc cetera, we have the 
the power we always have, it's time to take it back. They wouldn't care so much about mind controlling us and and affecting our reality and, and suppressing our speech and all of that if we didn't create reality with the words that we speak and the thoughts that we have. And as the people in the chat room are saying, Zorg 2020. Nice. Uh-oh. Just, just remember, folks, snowflakes' lives matter. Yep. And, and, before we forget, this is really important. Watch out for the invisible Bigfoots, and if you ride a unicorn, ride it backwards, because the media said so. That'll protect you. Wear your face diaper, 12 feet distance. Yep, exactly. <laughs> we love you, Rex. This has love been you, man. freaking awesome. This has been, a, this has been great. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Love you guys. Let's Peace do it out. again soon. Love you too. Take care. Bye. Take care. Oh, that was a lot of fun. That was a I'm lot of fun. I'm glad we finally got to connect with Rex. So yeah. we'll get to some BC BTV stuff since we are here. Two videos have been taken off of YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, I'm.